Now welcome to my YouTube clip when I'm trying to demystify uh, APC and uh, diathermy, which I think is a bit of an occult art. Um, diathermy has been with us apparently since 1910 or around then, when it was first kind of uh, invented I think, but it wasn't until 20 or 30 years later that it became in widespread use in surgery of course. Um, now when I started to train in colonoscopy, the Olympus diathermy machine, I think it was something called the PSD-10. It was very simple, it was always set at the same uh, setting, 2.5 blend. No one knew what it meant, but that's what it was set at. So no one needed to know what it meant, because it was always at the same setting. Then we got this thing called an Erby ICC-200, and that was always set at 24 watts blend coagulation 15 uh, or cut 25 blend uh, effect level 2. Life was still quite easy. Uh, but now the diathermy uh, machines are a bit more complicated and I think as endoscopists we need to know how they how they work, what the basic settings are and what they do. Now of course Going back to the basics, diathermy, of course, are high high frequency generators. You see, if you plug if you plug your your uh, your equipment straight into the wall current, 50 hertz. If you send that hurt, that that kind of frequency through a patient, they get painful muscle spasms. So that's no good. Now, what these diathermy machines do, they increase the frequency to something like 300,000 cycles per second. So, uh, and at that speed, you don't get the muscle muscle twitching. Um, the, uh, basically the current goes through through your device, say a snare, into the patient and then returns through the t patient's tissues, through the, uh, the, the return plate wherever you placed it, back to the machine which closes the electrical circle. Uh, by the way, it doesn't matter where you put the diathermy pad, as long as you don't put it on top of a, say, a, a joint replacement, because then the joint replacement can conduct the electricity to one particular point on the pad and you get a burn there. Similarly, you, uh, we, uh, we shouldn't put it a smack bang on top of a pacemaker box, because that, even if the pacemaker is, is uh, insulated, you can still put it out. And of course you can't use diathermy in, in these new modern pacemakers that defibrillate the patient because the, the radio frequency current as goes through may be sensed as a machine as a, as a VF arrest and you then, then the patient gets a very painful shock and surprise and so do you. So you don't want that. So in these cases the, 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 the um, pacemaker device will have to be set to non-sensing and not to discharge a current. If it, uh, um, if it senses some electro irregularity. Um, on occasion, by the way, a little tip. If you put the diathermy on the, say, the patient's arm, or my, my own f favorite position is on the side of the patient because you can't really have any, any kind of metal work down there on the soft side. And it doesn't tend to be hairy either, while heart, arms or, or legs tend to be hairy. But there, the, the only problem you can, you can get is very dry skin. Well, you can get anywhere, I guess. In those cases, uh, the, the way to get around it is to put some hand emollient, some skin cream on top of the, of the skin then put the pad on and it will always work. Little tip for you guys. Um, diathermy is of course a type of witchcraft. It's a bit of hocus pocus. Electricity after all, I never understood electricity. Um, basically the yellow petal is used to cut and the blue for coagulation. But what, it, don't, uh, what does it actually mean? Um, of course, you rarely want pure cut, do you? Because you're cutting through living tissue, so you want a little bit of kind of sealing or coagulation uh, of sealing the vessels as you go through. The only time where I can think of using pure cut would be, say, when you do this, the, the circumferential cut around an ESD site, or perhaps when you do sphincterotomy where there's no hardly any vessels. But even then, you want a little bit of coag, don't you? Because there may be vessels in there. Um, in the old days, what, what they used to do, Heck, what I used to do was to, to step a little bit on the yellow pedal and then you step into the blue pedal yeah, then you went back yellow you step a bit of both and, and it was kind of all under your non-control and now that has been taken away from us uh, nowadays. nowadays so how they actually work is that first when you step on the yellow pedal it gives you a burst of pure cut power which I think lasts something like one twentieth of a second and then and that is basically a, a low voltage high frequency cut that vaporizes the tissues um, so you don't need much force to close the snare because the tissue ahead of the snare is being vaporized pulverized vaporized really it, the cells are exploded and um, so there's a little initial uh, one twentieth of a second of, of cut 
but then after that you get a period of coagulation uh, and that is a, a high voltage low frequency cult, uh, current and that can go on for something like three quarter of a second in fact the 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 higher the effect level set on your machine the longer the coagulation step is so if you want a really long amount of heating then you put the effect level up from say eight or four whatever that setting uh, means in your machine uh, and then after after the initial cut followed by uh, coagulation, there's a rest period for something like a twentieth of uh, a fifth of a second where the tissue is allowed to, to, to cool down and then the cycle starts up again with a variable little gap in between. Uh, of course, the, 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 the other thing about diathermy is that the, the heat generated by, by the snare is a function, I think, of the square of the circumference of, your, of, your, of the amount of tissue um, grasped so if you got a lot of tissue you get a lot of, uh, you get little heating but the, the 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 closer the snare is closing the more heating you get to the to kind of the power of two and of course that's not really what you want because you want you want a smooth cut from the beginning to the center without a kind of accelerating as you cl uh, close the snare so the modern machine has got this peak power peak system I think it called or something like that where it basically gives more power at the beginning and then the 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 power is kind of rain back in to give you a smooth cut from the outside to the center of the polyp well you can argue we don't like bleeding why use cut at all why don't use coagulation cut on blue no bleeding uh, well, and a few people do that with with pedunculated polyps uh, I can use uh, I, I can think of a few reasons why you wouldn't cut all the polyps on blue on the on the coagulation setting uh, because of course first of all you don't actually cut very well you, it, the, the nerves will complain that it takes a lot of force to cut through this polyp because you're basically cooking it as you're cutting it through you're not vaporizing tissue you're simply cooking it and the cooking is another disadvantage because you can see the whiteness uh, in the middle of the store kind of traveling a long way and of course if it goes all the way up to the top of the polyp you're effectively destroying histology so if it's a malignant polyp with the with the, with the cancer at the top the histopathology won't be able to tell you that it's all removed because you actually destroy the evidence that you clear the pot the, the cancer completely by cooking the tissue and similarly if the if the heat goes on to the onto the stalk downwards towards the the base of the polyp and, and outwards you run in the list uh, risk of a uh, late perforation you don't like that either in fact, uh, cooking a polyp uh, uh, reduces the risk of immediate bleeding, but there's some evidence that it increases the risk of late bleeding. Bit of the opposite to cold snaring a polyp, where you, have, you always get a little bit of initial bleeding, but there's no risk of a late bleeding because you didn't use any heat. So, how about the setting for hot biopsies? Well, hold on right there. I don't, th don't think we should use hot biopsies anymore. You know, in, I was taught, oh, hot biopsy, you grab hold of the polyp at the top, lift it up, and then you cook it just enough for a little bit of snow on top of Mount Fuji, kind of as you tend to the tissues. Of course, what happens sooner or later, you get complete midwinter in Japan. You get that whiteness goes all the way down the, the, the side of the Mount Fuji onto the, uh, uh, the, the kind of surrounding countryside. And those are the pages and they get the late perforation and it's appalling uh, how you know that that tend to ha tended at least to happen maybe once a year something like that uh, overcooking the polyp where I looked at the looked at the picture thought oh god that's a lot of diathermy so the the safe thing is stop using hot biopsy in your department it's a lot safer because the simple concept of a bit of snow on top of Mount Fuji is just too complex for some of now I must admit that the, the uh, diatherm settings, I think, are bewildering. Um, and for this reason, I've put together some video clips here to, to illustrate, really, what it looks like. I've used liver, by the way. Uh, how, how it looks like when you use the different settings uh, on an Erby Viox uh, machine, a Vio machine. That's what the one we use in Leeds. But, of course, the new diatherm machine will have something corresponding. It's one of, the, the, uh, one of my pleas, by the way, that the settings on all the diatherm machine should be called the same so we can understand what they mean but of course they don't it's kind of trademarked so end cut eye on an herb it will no doubt become be called something completely different on the Olympus diathermy or any of the other diathermy machines out there standardization seems to be a step too far unfortunately for our diathermy makers so 
Now, talking of an herbivite machine, what are the settings recommended for snare polypectomy? Well, they, um, the herb recommends what's called the endocut Q. Endocut Q. Q, yeah, by the way, why, why Q for goodness sake? Q is the shape of a snare uh, as, uh, as, you, uh, as you place around it. That, so that's why they chose Q. Just to remind you, Q looks a bit like a snare, doesn't it? So that's the setting you use for, for snare polypectomy. In fact, it's a setting you use for piecemeal EMR as well. Uh, the setting for ESD is a bit different, but we'll come on to that. Uh, the Erby, they recommend using slightly less heat, i.e. lower effect level, when, you, when you're when removing a poly from the right hemicolon, which is thinner, of course. So there, they recommend using effect level 1, whilst on the in the rectum or in the left hemicolon, kind of up here, they recommend using effect level 3. Um, in the duodenum, they recommend using effect level 2, Two, kind of in between the two. I would probably go for effect level one if I were you because the, after all the duodenum I think uh, because I've been through it a few times appears to be thinner than the left uh, than the right hemicolon of the of the uh, uh, the right uh, the, the right part of the colon. Now in these two clips here that you can see here in front of you uh, uh, I'm using effect level one versus effect level four endocut Q to illustrate how the effect level four seemed uh, gives gives you more heat basically remember the heat the, the the cooking section of the cut cycle is increased you get more cooking effect of course will reduce the bleeding you can see by the way that there are uh, that endo cut endo cut Q has got the little pauses in the cutting that allows you to kind of control the cutting I think it's a good feature because if you think that it's going to be too fast you, you get a bit of extra time then to kind of slow down the cutting uh, maybe step on the blue if you start to see blood coming out kind of around the snare as it being closed around the polyp etc so I th uh, it's it's a cut is the setting of course that I use when I remove uh, polyps, uh, pedunculated polyps, or when I do uh, EMR. Now, of course, small polyps with a very whimsical kind of stalk won't have a big vessel in it. So in these cases, I do use effect level one. Correspondingly, if it's a thick stalk, long thick stalk, I would be tempted to use effect level four uh, because a thick stalk tend to be tend to to lead to a, a to have a, a thick vessel underneath it. Um, uh, and uh, you don't want to cut through that too quickly, of course. Similarly, very flat whimsical polyps, like a serrated polyp, they ha they never have any any significant uh, vessels underneath it. So in these cases, I always do an EMR using effect level one. There's, there's hardly any vessels to see it really. Uh, similarly, if you get a very poor lifting, it's an adenomatous polyp, but the, it's not lifting very well. You don't want to overcook it because you haven't got much lift. In those cases, I will use a low effect level more than a high effect. So how about bleeding? How do I deal with that? Uh, well, the most convenient way of dealing with bleeding is not actually apply a, quil a clip when it happens. Uh, certainly for EMR, it's probably to use uh, the hot biopsy forceps, or if you can uh, afford it, the, the coag grasper or the Pentax uh, uh, coag grasper equivalent. Um, uh, but I'm being a cheapskate, I tend to use a hot biopsy forceps, and I set the diatherma machine to the, the blue side to soft coagulation uh, at uh, effect level 2, 80 watts. Erby, uh, by the way, recommends anything between, I think, uh, two, effect level 2 to 5, uh, power setting uh, 40 to 80. And basically, if there's a bit of bleeding uh, in the middle of the EMR defect, I grab hold of it with the uh, with the hot pipe saucer, lift it up, tend it away from the mucosa, step on the blue pedal, use this little delay, kind of two seconds, and then starts to fizzle. I let it fizzle for another second or two, then I tell the nurse just open the snare. You don't want to pull the whole thing off, of course. So make sure that the nurse knows to open the snare, uh, open open the uh, hot pipes of forceps, uh, and uh, and that tends to uh, uh, that should really uh, stop the bleeding. Of course, if you do an EST and you're coming up to a chunk of vessel, then grab hold of it, uh, cook it in the, with the same setting, soft coag, effect level two or three, for example, uh, power setting of 80 watts, and you you basically seal it before you cut through it. That's how you deal with it. Now in these clips, I run the, I run the tip of a snare across the surface of a liver to compare effect level one with effect level eight. Effect level eight being greater heating. But as I said, Irby recommends effect level two, between two and five for when you're using soft coag to, to seal vessels.
Now, how about ESD then? What do you do for that? Well, of course, with ESD, there are several steps. And the first step is to inject uh, outside the lesion and start cutting that kind of a trench around it. And, uh, and for that, uh, there are several settings recommended. Fujifilm, uh, who um, uh, have uh, made the, the flush knife, they recommend Endocut Eye Effect Level 2 for that mucosal incision. And Erby, uh, they recommend uh, Endocut Eye for cutting the mucosa in, for example, a, a POEM procedure. So it, uh, Endocut Eye, you know, this is the set, you're familiar with it, is the setting, Endocut Eye is the setting we use for uh, sphincterotomy, uh, you know, mo most commonly. Um, and perhaps endocut eye would also be the setting you would use when cutting a a peptic stricture with kind of a lot of scarring in a in a narrow kind of band. Uh, if it keeps splitting in the same place when you use the uh, uh, balloon, what you can do is, is cut the scar tissue in another few places to kind of so the the effect of the balloon is kind of spread across the the um, uh, fibrous tissue rather than kind of making one part of the of the uh, of the uh, fibrous tissue kind of develop a deeper and deeper cut. They, I think it's safer then to cut cut in a few places uh, uh, around the peptic stricture. Um, uh, Professor Yahagi, who invented the, the dual knife, the Olympus dual knife, he uh, and his department uh, in Tokyo, they recommend a different setting. They recommend what's called the dry cut setting uh, for cutting that circumferential cut around uh, around a polyp before an ESD. And uh, in this these two video clips, I compare the end of cut eye with the dry cut setting. Both are set at effect level one. And uh, you can see that uh, similar to the endocut Q, the endocut uh, I has got this kind of pulse mode, uh, whilst the dry cut uh, set, by the way, in this example, 180 watts, is, is a continuous cut. You need a very short, steady hand for that because you have no time to kind of correct yourself if that cut is going, going the wrong way because it will travel kind of without any effort of, the, of your little knife. It will <laughs> keep cutting. Um, by the way, the endocut I, you can't set the, the power setting, both endocut Q and endocut I. The, the power setting is set by the machine. The machine will sense how much power it needs to put through the tissue to kind of achieve the effect, while the, the dry cut, you can set it. And uh, I think um, the, uh, it's usually set to effect to 50 watts effect level 4. That's certainly Professor Yahagi's recommendation for the dual knife, effect level 4, 50 watts. I must say though that I prefer the endocut eye. I like the pulse mode. My hand is not steady enough to kind of trust myself, not going to go and wonky. So I like the this kind of interrupted endocut eye uh, when I go around the uh, cutting the trench around the polyp. So that's the, actually the one I recommend, unless you're really good and practice that EST when you, and you when you develop a really steady hand. I'm sure the dry cut is is quicker no doubt about it. Quicker but a bit more scary I'd say. By the way, um, Erby also uses something called auto cut. You'll find it on the machine and that behaves to my mind identical to the to the dry cut. I don't really know the difference between the two. In fact I don't actually know a single instance when uh, when Erby recommends auto cut over dry cut. Personally, if, if I were you, I would actually forget about the auto cut, forget about the dry cut and remember enter cut I for the circumferential incision, unless you're a, you're a very kind of seasoned expert. So that's the, that's the cutting around the, the, the trench. Once you cut a trench kind of in the front end of the polyp, by convention we don't actually cut all the way around because what happens as you then start to inject underneath it, the, the submucosal injection will start to leak out. So instead we, tr we usually nowadays create a little pocket. So you cut the front end, you open it up, the submucosal tissue is kind of billowing up a little bit in front of you and you then start the dissection step. And um, there are two there are two recommended settings here. You can e either use the first coag uh, setting, effect level th uh, three, four to five watts, or you can use the swift coag, where they recommend effect level one hundred watts. And I put the two settings side by side here in this uh, in this uh, kind of video clip, cutting, cutting a piece of liver. And I think you can tell that the swift coag seems to be quicker and smoother. And it's actually what I use for my submucosal dissections. Having said that, the force coag 
could do with increasing the power a little bit. Uh, the current setting here in the video clip is 30 watts, but I think it'll behave a bit better with the, uh, if you put the power up to 45 recommend, uh, watts as recommended by Irby. And the Swift Coag uh, seemed to do a lot of sparking, so I don't actually use Swift Coag at 100 watts, which I think uh, is a little bit like a light show. Actually bring it back a little bit and use 80 watts when cutting through tissues. Um, now, similarly, Irby recommend that when you create this tunnel in Poem, for example, you use the Swift Coag. Uh, but Irby also mentions that, yeah, if you don't like Swift Coag, you can also use Endocut Q or you can use Dry Cut. Basically, uh, Poem is so new that the diathermy manufacturers haven't even decided on which is the best setting to, to kind of carry it out. Gives you a little feel for where we are with Poem, I think. It's still early days, really, guys. Um, by the way, for um, when you cut the circular muscle at Poem, then Irby recommends using the Endocut Q setting. Or, they say, again, new technology, spray coag, which I never use otherwise. Before I actually do the cut, well, I, I do a little, uh, like a, like a four-step checklist uh, that I go through. First, I make sure that the return plate is in the right right place, not beginning to come off, and that the dye machine, diathermy machine is still showing me green light. Uh, then I double check on the diathermy machine that the settings is uh, uh, correct. You might have done something else beforehand. I have uh, forgotten to turn them back to what they should be so double check on that and then I look over to my assistant is has she connected her snare or whatever to the electrics and um, and I also at that point tell my assistant how long I expect her to take to cut the polyp now in some units the the uh, endoscopists uh, are trained to kind of do their own kind of cutting closing the snare it's just that it's that's one I, I like to have control with my one hand and then have uh, the other hand here with the kind of holding the the shaft of of the um, uh, of the snare for example so I, I prefer to do that rather than kind of hold on here and, and, and kind of close in the handle but it's personal preference I don't think there's anything right or wrong to tell the nurse ask the nurse to kind of close at a bit of the speed or uh, uh, closing the, the snare handle yourself. Finally, before I cut, I glance down on the floor. Is my foot over the right pedal? It's easy to get confused, and before you know it, you're kind of using blue instead of yellow, yellow instead of blue. So I double check that my feet are in the right position, that the foot pedal hasn't moved at all. And then I cut. Now, so much about, uh, so much for diatherm. How about argon plasma coagulation? Well, it used to be. Uh, quite simple. Our urban machine always used to be set at 35 watts uh, uh, APC on the right side of colon or the small bowel and 65 watts for everywhere else, uh, left side of colon, the stomach or the esophagus. Uh, the gas flow rate defaulted about 1.8 liters per minute and it was never changed. In fact, uh, I don't actually change it very often uh, still. Uh, and all the time our herb was set at force, forced APC. That's kind of a, cons a, a continuous stream of, uh, of uh, argons, uh, argon gas coming out of the, uh, the applicator. Now it's a bit more complicated. There are loads of different settings on your diathermy machine for argon. Um, Irby still recommends using forced APC when you are ablating or destroying polyps. They recommend 30 watts when the polyp is up to 50 millimeters and 60 watts if the polyp is bigger than 60 uh, uh, than, than 15 millimeters. Uh, of course, if the polyp is bigger than 50 millimeters, you don't want to ablate it. You want to EMR it. So I don't know what they even mention. You know, ablation of bigger polyps. Uh, can it be done? You know, for a polyp much bigger than 50 millimeters, it might be so thick that you can't actually ablate it. The heat will never go deep enough uh, unless you really, really cook it scary a really long time, perhaps. Um, so I, I would ignore, you know, the bit that Irby recommends removing ablating polyps bigger than 50 millimeters because in those cases you should probably think some other way of dealing with it. Um, they also recommend force coagulation for bleeding lesions such as peptic ulcers, Mandelweiss, Jula foie lesions uh, at a power setting of between 20 to 60 watts. That's the OB recommendations for force coag when dealing with anything bleeding really. Uh, but of course, as already said, when it comes to bleeding at uh, diathermy, I always use the soft coag. I never use APC because I don't think it quite goes deep enough for proper bleeding. 
uh, finally, uh, for stent overgrowth, uh, um, the uh, Urban recommends force APC at the power setting of 20 to 40 watts. I think that's a little bit too too kind of soft, so I increase the power usually to 60, 80, or even 100 watts if there's a lot of stent overgrowth that needs to be removed. Now, in this uh, video clip, I've, I've got two pieces of liver. <coughs> On one side, it's uh, the liver has been kind of diathermic at the setting of 30 watts, 1.8 liter flow of argon per minute. On the other side, it's 50 watts at a higher flow rate of 2.4 liters per minute. And you can see the difference uh, in heating effect. Now, the other setting that I do use sometimes on my uh, Erby diathermy is pulsed APC. Well, it's basically what it says on the tin, it kind of pulses. Uh, Erby recommends pulsed APC effect level 2 to tidy up, say, around an EMR defect and when treating vascular lesions, superficial vascular lesions such as angiectasia or GABE. As you can see in this clip, uh, pulsed APC is surprisingly fierce. It's like a little explosion every time it comes out. I personally prefer the forced APC setting when treating the peripheral edges around an EMR defect. Uh, but then, of course, I do pay attention to the, the, the length of time I'm applying the organ in one place. They used to say in the old days, oh, don't worry about APC. It will never penetrate deep enough to cause any deep damage because the tissue becomes unviable and the electrical kind of current will, will stop, stop flowing, flowing through the tissue. Rubbish. You can perforate with APC. Now, to summarize then, uh, endocut Q is something you use for snare polypectomy and EMR, endocut I for you doing sphincterotomies and for the incision around a polyp before an ESD. For the submucosal dissection at the time of an ESD, uh, I prefer the swift coag, uh, effect level 1 or 2, 80 watts. Pulsed APC should be used when, when treating superficial vessels and forced APC when you want the heat to go a bit deeper. Um, and that tends to be the main settings that I use for the Erby bios diathermy. Now here I got a few kind of uh, tables that I put together to give you a bit of a feel for the different effect levels etc that I use. Uh, it's, um, it's based mainly on my preferences so use it as a rough guide only. and. Uh, um, be, be careful with the, with, the, with the effect level. The more heat you apply, the, the, the less immediate bleeding uh, you get, but probably the more late bleeding you get and the higher risk of a, of a late polypectomy syndrome or even a late perforation. So be careful increasing the effect level. But anyway, these two tables, a bit of a, a, bit of a guide for you. So by all means, uh, have a look at them, print them out if need be, is a kind of a, an easier way of, uh, um, of summarizing the different settings.